We welcome you in to the SMX Insider Post Race Show after the conclusion of the inaugural SMX World Championship here at the LA Memorial Coliseum. Oh, what a night it has been. The finals are complete. The inaugural season is complete and it went out in the style that we had all hoped for and anticipated. That is spectacular style. Appropriate for this LA Memorial Coliseum. Yes, the, the aftermath, the discussions, the review, the thoughts, and Honda HRC's Jet Lawrence and his entire entourage, they're just reflecting on an epic season since stepping up from the 250 class after the Monster Energy Supercross season was finished to the 450 class for Pro Motocross and just sailing all the way, not, not, not necessarily smoothly, but sailing all the way to the Super Motocross World title. Phenomenal effort from this young man. Yeah, I mean, and just many times as he's been put to the test throughout his career, especially this year, it is a really tough jump, even as, as talented as he is to go from the 250 to the 450. James, you know all about it. It's tough. Those guys are so incredibly talented and you can't cover up mistakes. And he's been put to the test and he answered the bell when it counted every single time. Yeah, absolutely. And as you see him right there, like, you know, I can't say enough good things. I've had a chance to talk to the kid, and, and he is a kid, really. Um, you know, he's smart. He works really hard. I mean, we see him laughing and, and playing, and, and even I said last weekend, you know, what happened, he's just a kid enjoying life, and um, it's cool to watch this. And I can tell you what, he's going to make everybody in that 450 class better, and he's going to make the sport elevate. And you can see from Ken Roxon stepping it up since he's been here, and, man, it's been awesome to see it and to be a part of this whole thing. That's your champion. He's always very quick to say thanks to my Honda family. Ricky, we spoke about this for many years. In the Monster Energy Supercross Championship, Honda hadn't had a Premier Class champion since you in 20, uh, in 2003, 20, oh, oh, 20 years ago, right? Until oh, Chase, four. Chase oh, oh, 04. So Chase Sexton won, right? And then, and then Jet picks up as far as the Pro Motocross Championship, goes 22-0. And his brother won his, his, uh, his uh, regional championship in Supercross and won Pro Motocross as well. And it's been a phenomenal year for the Red Riders. Well, and that's just that's a testament to the team that they have behind the scenes, that uh, the unhung, unsung, unsung heroes, if you will. It, uh, it's incredible. They, they have great people in that, um, in that race shop. Uh, I've worked with a lot of those guys, Lars being one of them. And uh, it's just, it, it's so cool to finally see Honda get the credit and the results that they deserve. They've, uh, they've been through a rough patch for sure. As Jim Holly came in, congratulations, Gabriella Mazzarolo from Alpine Stars there. They're celebrating a significant milestone uh, this week as well. And Jet, one of their key ambassadors and athletes. So celebrations all around for this young man. James, what's that like carrying that Johnny, pressure when you know there's so much on the line? I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot. I'm just stunned at how big that trophy is right now. I'm staring at that thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of pressure. But again, I, I love what I see. And the reason why this kid is so tough to beat because we saw him struggle today during practice and struggling for him and for us, it's like a fifth place in practice. But I mean, what happened last weekend and coming back in here, being on a real Supercross track is first time. Don't forget, it's his first time on a 450 race on a Supercross track on a million dollars. I mean, this kid just answered it. So he's able to handle it and it's awesome to watch again. What, what I love and I think I can speak for you guys too is that all of his competitors and even the 250 competitors they're going to be looking at Hayden Deegan and they're going to say okay now we know what a super motocross season in totality looks like and how we're going to attack 2024. Fair point? I, I 100 100% fair point you could see the enthusiasm rising as we got to the end of supercross certainly in the pro motocross championship hence uh, Ken Roxon coming back to race and I think now that people see how real this is it's going to be even bigger next year I truly believe that no I, I agree so th they'll be better prepared but so will he oh yeah you know he'll be better prepared so uh, yeah it's a lot of stuff all of us um, you know everybody will be doing it so it's been a great night of racing <laughs> they're asking they're asking to see the ring let's see the bling of which jet proudly boasts that let's take you back and show you highlights from the 450 class and there's Chase Sexton prior to the fall. Uh, 
what was the night going to hold in store for him? Remember, Chase came in with the SMX World Championship points lead. He had a couple of advantage over his younger teammate, Jet Lawrence. But that's the question everyone was wondering. How was this night going to play out? Who was going to perform the best? So we take you to Moto One, and it was Adam C and Cirillo with the whole shot aboard his Monster Energy Kawasaki, who took off. Justin Barsha was hot in pursuit, and Justin made a really good move, but it wouldn't last very long because uh, it was a hiccup. But that was after this one here, where Dylan Ferrandez was the biggest victim. Yeah, you got McElrath going down to looks like Grant Harlan as well, and just hate to see uh, Ferrandez' season end up like that, especially uh, on that Monster Energy star yacht. James, this is what I was referring to with Farsha. Yeah, tough position. I mean, he was hounding um, AC for a couple laps, and then Adam Cicerella, and then he comes out, just loses traction, which was the theme of the night, and then they brought out the red flag. But yeah, that was a tough hit, and they racked him up. Staggered start with Jason Anderson at the front and Roxon in hot pursuit. Yeah, what we didn't see was Jason Anderson be able to get past and um, when all that went down and then the race was on. We saw Chase Sexton ahead of Jet Lawrence. Next thing you know, Jet Lawrence is ahead of Chase Sexton and he had to go past all these guys. And once he once those nights started, once he got in the rhythm, there was no stopping Jet. So yeah. then Roxon was the target RC. Well, he was and I, I just love the intensity that Ken Roxon had throughout the whole playoffs. SMX playoffs, these three rounds, and then for the uh, championship weekend here in LA Coliseum, he never gave up. Here he is battling it out, and then that's where Jet gets into the number two spot. He's going to be able to move up, move up the road. But uh, to my point, like I loved what I saw from Ken Roxon. This is a great way to go out and bring that and bring that intensity into the 2024 season. And that's a quad that uh, Jet was doing. And great reaction by Ken Roxon to start jumping that quad mid-moto. That was the signature move. There was a quick glance over to see where Kenny was and a quick glance back to seal the deal in moto number one. And that gave Jet the points advantage coming into the all-important Moto2, but boy, oh boy, his teammate was not about to give up easily. Sexton got the whole shot, and everyone was chasing Chase. Yeah, they were definitely chasing, and after the first Moto, it was kind of lackluster. We was wondering what was going to happen with Chase, and boy, this kind of reminded me of old Chase Sexton. You let him out front, you look up, he's four or five seconds out front, and even Jet said after the race, like, I mean, dude, he dropped us on the track that everybody was the same, like, he couldn't do anything for it, but then everything came crashing down as we're watching um, Ken Roxon try to get around Adam Cincerella right here in the beginning. It was a good move be between the guys who have spent a lot of time at the training track together. Meanwhile, the Honda duo up front, it was all looking good for Chase Sexton, Ricky, until... Right there, self-induced error, and we've seen it, and he's not going to like us talking about it, but we're not doing our job if we don't say it. And uh, he leans the bike over, looks like he leans the bike over a little too much, gets the front end down, and then just pile drives into the sand, goes head first. Hopefully he's okay. I really respect how this guy never gives up. And uh, you know what, he went out, he went down. He didn't go down without a fight. No, he was out in front and that put his young teammate, Jet Lawrence, in the driver's seat, so to speak, because it just grew. Even with Jet sitting in second place, he still had the SMX world title points lead. But then this grew that advantage. Roxon did not give up. But time for the checkered flag, time for an SMX world title victory. The 20-year-old couldn't believe it. Congratulated by the veteran. One equals one million. One equals one million, says Chet Lawrence. Yes, it does. The one-one result equals one million. Yep, yes, it does. I'm still looking at that trophy. It's big. Yeah. There's the results on the night and what led to Lawrence being victorious and the absence of his older brother being unable to compete in the 250 he flew the lawrence family flag high with that 1-1 result what a way to go out at the most important race of the season here's will christian with more thank you lee jet you always talk about these wins. Every time you're on the podium, um, you talk about the team, us, we, everything that's gone into it. And with you now, Christian and Sham, you've been together now as, as a team for five years. It, 
you can't do this without each other. This is like not not taken away from you, Jet, but this man next to you, you you give him props. You tell us how important it is. Um, so just for everybody at home, that relationship that you two have, um, what, what does it mean and how does it get you here to this point? It's um it's been awesome. I mean, since the first time I got here to America, he's been my mechanic. Uh, we were sharing actually with Honey Yoda. Uh, and it's just been awesome. The, the bonds has been getting stronger and stronger. He puts puts the hard work and then the rest of the team does also and it makes helps me and have that motivation and drive to make sure I perf on the weekend I perform just not for myself but for them because once I'm on the track that's more of my control so I make sure I take control of that and do the best I can and uh, so I show my respect in that way to, to the guys who are at the shop working hard especially Christian. And now all that goes in, Christian, you get to stand here now. You guys are now champions at the end of this extra long season here. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to the rest of the team, knowing the work that's gone in behind the scenes and hearing the words come out of Jet like that? I mean, obviously, that's the whole goal, right, is to provide him a bike to go out there and do his job on to the highest capabilities he can and to win. And when you win, that gives you the extra motivation to the whole team to collectively work harder and harder to give him everything he needs to do his job. And then it makes our job obviously a lot easier too. The nerves, Christian, the nerves. I know we, you always wear this smile, but the nerves for you must be unbelievable when you know you've gotten to this point and you're so close. How do you manage to, cut, to you know, just keep it all under control? I mean, you just keep doing what you do. I'm confident in myself and to provide him a motorcycle that he can do his job on. And the biggest thing he needs to know is that it's good when he goes out. So if he's questioning himself before the question, the bike's good, this and that, then he's not going to be performing good. So just try to cold it all in and give the best we can. Well, collectively, you guys got the job done. Very happy for you. Huge congratulations and go have a lot of fun over at the uh, Hall of Tonight. I know it's going to be a good time. Uh, JT, over to you. Well, from one championships duo to another, I'm here with Hayden Deegan and Brent Duffy, the 250 SMX champions of the night. And Hayden, you've had all of an hour to soak this in. Walk us through your thoughts. Uh, friends and family here, a building that has meant so much to your family. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to soak in more and more over the next days. But uh, yeah, how are you feeling right now? Uh, yeah, this is a dream come true. It's uh, I was feeling it a lot right after the race, but it's kind of you know dull right now. It's uh, it's uh, you don't know really how to think right now. It's uh, it's a dream come true, rookie season to win uh, my first championship, and yeah, it's uh, a lot of hard work, dedication uh, into this sport, and uh, yeah, we just got to keep uh, keep building. And it's only up from here too. And for Brent, you know, I'm I'm very interested in the in the last moments before a race, right? It's just you and your rider, and there's always something to be said, right? What, last words of encouragement, something just to get him set up for success in that moto. Like, what is that relationship like? And what are those words like in those final moments before he takes off? Yeah, it's different with every rider you work with. And, you know, going into this race, it was, uh, you had to win, like you just as good as you could. So Hayden responds really well to motivation. So we fired him up and I think I fired him up just enough, just enough for that. So that's perfect. Doggins, yeah. I got, you know, Duff hit me on the back, you know, get me fired up and then, yeah. You know, throw the headphones on, just straight David Goggins speech. That's all. I, I don't listen to no music. It's just straight David Goggins, dude. Just keep, how, how hard do you want to be, man? Come on. Well, congratulations. Both of you deserve it. And, uh, yeah, have a great off season. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thanks. And along with those championships, along with those, we have a Manufacturer's Cup in the inaugural SMX Championship. Now, it appeared that Honda was winning everything this year, but remember, Hunter Lawrence did not race and didn't score any points in the 250 division. The Manufacturer's Cup is determined by each brand's best finish in each class at all three rounds. So Yamaha ends up pulling this one out. I'm going to introduce Mike Pelletier, the director of racing for the AMA, to hand Jeremy Coker a Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing the Manufacturer's Cup. Thanks, Jason. Uh, you know, the riders do an incredible job on the racetrack, but it certainly takes a team to win at this level. So on behalf of the AMA, AMA Pro Racing, Feld Entertainment, MX Sports Pro Racing, I'm proud to present you with the 2023 SMX Manufacturers Cup to Yamaha. Look, I don't think there's a team out there that wants to win worse than you guys. It's been tough. The Lawrence Brothers and Chase Sexton are tremendous competitors. You guys never gave up. They didn't win everything this year. You got the title with Hayden Deegan, and I know you're going to come back even stronger next year to try to get more. Yeah, of course. You know, all the props out to those guys. It's uh, It's been a good season for them. You know, we've been in this position, and uh, it's it's a really cool thing. So to win this, it's, uh, it's a pretty good thing. You know, it's something we've been close to multiple times, and Honda's actually taken it from us. So we've been able to do this this year. Uh, it's a good thing. We'll come back next year and try to win the actual championships.
and we talked to the riders about how much money they can make in this SMX series. Talk about the effort level that your team put in to come back for three more weeks and really focus and try to get this done in the first year. Yeah, it's actually a really big effort. You know, uh, to to add three races, but not only that, to hybrid tracks, to to a more motocross track, back to a supercross track, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work on the entire team, the suspension department, the engine department. People don't see that. Um, so the work that those guys put in and able to do that and then to perform, to come out and win this is really cool. Yeah, that is definitely hard work and hard earned. Yamaha is your Manufacturers Cup champion in 2023 SMX. Thanks, Weege, and congratulations to Jeremy and Star Yamaha and the monster sponsored team. Let's take you to the 250 highlights over the two motos here at the LA Memorial Coliseum. It was not a happy story for Hunter Lawrence. While it's all celebrations for his younger bro, this is what happened yesterday to Hunter, and it was the beginning of bigger problems. Yeah, uh, this was yesterday, like you said, and we didn't know how how big of a uh, um, how big of this was going to be. He lingered over until today, and then as you see him coming down, I think he just landed, and it must have been some kind of back. I heard pinch nerve or something, but you could see him slowing down, and obviously by that limp right there, um, he was in some pain. So. We weren't really sure what the, it was kind of a bummer to see that happen, but Lee, the night was just getting started. We didn't know if the action was going to be intense. Well, with the, with the then championship leader out of the way, that really opened things up for Hayden Deegan and Joe Shimoda as we take you to the Heat 1 highlights. And Hayden put himself in a good position. He was on the outside of that threesome there, but it was Tom Vial aboard the Red Bull KTM who really got to the front pretty speedy. Yeah, definitely. With Hunter being out, we started looking at uh, Hayden Deegan and Joe Shimoto, but it was the others that kind of stepped up and, and kind of got in the middle of this. And as you can see, the first one was Jordan Smith coming out of the middle of nowhere. Uh, you know, he was able to pass Hayden Deegan and then go after Tom V out, which was riding really good, but nobody was stopping Jordan in this race. Ricky, how good was this ride by Smith? Oh, it was incredible, but he's capable of doing this stuff. He showed a lot of speed in the uh, Monster Energy Supercross Championship earlier on this year. So this isn't surprising to me. He just hasn't been able to put it together, but he surely did here in Moto1. Hayden Deegan wanted to get by Tom Vial. He won. It was all about the points, right? Big championship picture we can talk about now that we know this was the end result. But how about RJ Hampshire for the Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna? He put a pretty slick move on the now champ back then. And then he went after it as well. Check this out. Shimoda on Deegan. The two fighting for the title. No friendly moves there. That was definitely no friendly moves. I'm sure Hayden was as shocked as all of us when we saw that come in. And now uh, Tom Vial was like, I want to get into action here as well. But yeah, great move. Joe had to do that. He needed to beat Hayden. Um, and then he tried to get around Tom, but he couldn't. So towards the end, Jordan Smith got some pressure from RJ Hampshire. But look at how tough Jordan Smith hung on. He thought and knew that he could have been a contender for the title. That was the move that sealed the deal in Moto1 for the Monster Energy Star Yamaha racer. Look at that, done deal. And that put him right in the mix to be an SMX World 250 title holder. But it all went away very quickly in Moto2. Yeah, look at that start right there by the Monster Energy Star racing Yamahas. They were up front, and you gotta think, the whole year they've been getting dominated by HRC Honda team. Levi Kitchen, he did a lot of this uh, in Monster Supercross and the Pro Motocross Championship as well. When he would get the start, he would win. He was, un he was unbeatable, but this was early on, and you hate to see this uh, Schwartz number 85 on the Suzuki. He tangles with George Smith. George Smith's out, hated to see that. Tom Vial, he gets some business from uh, one other rider. I can't remember who it was, but uh, Tom rode really well in the first moto, probably was gonna do the same thing as well, but uh, Kitchen rode exceptional. And this was one of those races where there wasn't a lot happening after the first couple laps and you're waiting for the other shoe to drop and it just never did, but I love it. It's almost brought me back to, I was talking with James about it, uh, Vegas 2006 championship weekend where everyone were, rode superb. Just phenomenal, phenomenal riding by all these guys. You'll never hear these guys say second is enough, but second was enough tonight for 17 year old sensation Hayden Deegan. And at that stage, he didn't even know that he'd won. His mom and dad did. Yes, second was good enough for this teenage sensation to win the inaugural SMX 250 world title. Yeah, that was great. I mean, great route by Hayden. It's like my math, five plus two equals 500 or whatever it is, but that's a big old trophy. That right is. Unreal.
more than a quarter of a century after his famous father, Brian, did the legendary ghost ride to win here at this iconic stadium. The kid does it in his rookie season. Just incredible. Joe Shimoda was bummed. He couldn't believe that it slipped out of his hands, unfortunately. And then RJ Hampshire rocketed up into the top three. So pretty cool stuff. So much from the 250 category. And this night here at the LA Memorial Coliseum has given us everything that we thought and maybe more importantly hoped it would. Look at this. Ah, we didn't get to do that back in no. our day, dude. I, I, I think it was we can actually get in trouble for doing that That's back right. in our day. So, Kids, so lucky. Five points, fellas, was what did it in the end. Deegan over Shimoda. And I mentioned that RJ jumped up there to third. And big money, big money for those last uh, positional changes. Levi Kitchen said he took all of his tear-offs off prior to the drop of the gate and said, I need to get the whole shot so I don't have to worry about relying on my tear-offs. And then Jordan Smith finishing in the top five. All of the Monster Energy Star Yamaha riders there, all in the top six. So a really good team effort there as well. So that 250, both motos gave us plenty to, to chew on and Kitchen finished the year on the highest note. Let's go over there with the... But James, for you first up, how does 17-year-old how does Hayden Deegan winning half a million dollars go into this off-season and say, well, I need to make these adjustments for next year when it finished as phenomenally as it did? Well, I mean, I think he's got a, a strong team, a strong family, first off, with his sister and his dad um, kind of leading that story. But, I mean, I think his team, they, they've been here before. Maybe not here winning $500,000, but they won a lot of championships. And he knows that over there they're producing the next Hayden Deegan. So I think just the fact that the team has been here before. You got Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb in the 450 class. There's always going to be the, another level on that race team. So I think it would keep Hayden – digging to get to that level um but for sure where he started at six months ago basically oh, yeah. um you know in anaheim to where he is right now uh i said it a few weeks ago this kid is is here the kid is for real and so show. for the for the two of you wins just added fuel to the fire is it going to yeah. be the same story for well, this kid well i i certainly think is and one thing that i think he the reason he handles the fame so good he's been behind the camera his whole life for the most part i mean you go back to when he was on a, a ktm 65 he did a backflip yeah right and it was all over youtube and his dad is just a, a pioneer there's his bike from when he did the uh, ghost bike here in 1997 and uh, i think he's here to stay he's just one of those generational riders he handles the fame well and what i was really impressed with I've talked about it so much is he never really makes the same mistake twice he's able to rebound and that is incredibly hard to do at a young age yeah I agree and I think he went tonight he went from you know that's Brian Deegan's son Hayden Deegan to that's his dad no Hayden Deegan that's his dad Brian Deegan because he's his own man right now um, this championship is only gonna it's it's awesome it's awesome I'm, I'm kind of lost for words but yeah I'm just proud of this kid to be a fan of this sport and oh, yeah. watch him Sports in good hands with him. Well, before we say farewell, uh, it's appropriate because it's been a long and fun season that we get some final thoughts from the rest of our teammates. Will Christian, why don't you kick it off? What do you think about this inaugural SMX season? Well, maybe the smile on my face, Lee, is kind of giving it away a bit. The atmosphere down here today has just been, it's honestly hard to describe, to try and put that in a nutshell for you. It's just the build-up to it where we are being at the Coliseum, the racing tonight, it's just been incredible. The vibe down here, it's just started to clear out now by the podium, but everyone was just hanging out and you know, they could have gone, they could have left already, but they, they were just soaking it in. And I think they really understand um, the gravity of what's happened here and how important it is and, and just being a part of the first time that we have ever done this. And then we look forward to January and Monster Energy Supercross kicking off again. And now, my brain's there already. I'm already thinking, wow, if this is what we're seeing out of our rookies at the end of the season, what are we going to see going into January? And what kind of a season are we going to have all the way through there, through um, Pro Motocross and, of course, into the SMX playoffs again next year? And JT, I, I don't know if you agree with me here, but what I thought was going to be here at the beginning of all of this and where we've ended up um, has, has just surpassed anything I was expecting. Yeah, well, I agree so much. Uh, I'm, I'm left with a sense of reflection. Sitting here last October at the press conference to announce all of these great new additions to the sport, the combination of the Monster Energy Supercross Championship and the Pro Motocross Championship and the Super Motocross World Championship playoffs, 
I think everybody was wondering how would this play out? How would the new point system really work? Would we get the close racing in the championship battles that we were all hoping for? And it could not have played out any better. I mean, we came into this race with two winner-take-all scenarios among six different riders. So I feel so much gratitude for everyone who put this together, and I feel so proud to have been a part of it. Yeah, thanks, JT. When we introduced playoffs to this sport, I think we all started to envision the way it works in other sports, where what happens at the beginning or middle of the season does not always reflect the way it is when the big trophy is handed out at the end. And that is absolutely the way 2023 ended up. Two rookies won these world championships. It is the first year in the 450 class for Jet Lawrence. It's the first year as a pro for Hayden Deegan. But throughout the beginning of this 2023 season, we were celebrating the veterans. It was Eli Tomac moving into second all time in Supercross wins. Now as a father of three and over the age of 30. Now we've moved on to introduce the next generation, except there's one thing. By the time we get to Anaheim, Eli Tomac will be back. And we have still yet to see Jet Lawrence and Eli Tomac race each other. We could be looking at the clash of the generations when we get to 2024. And Weege, that's such a great point because we've spoken about it off camera as well. Is, is Eli Tomac sticking around because of the SMX system and he, structure? Or is he sticking around because he wants to take on Jet Lawrence? It's a question that we'll only know and have answered next year. So when we first broached this era, this new era of the Super Motocross World Championship, people saying, well, what does that mean? How, how is it structured? How does it work? What are the points? What's the money? And, and, and what is this all about? Well, now we're at the other end of it, and people look to people like you guys, legends of the sport, for your thoughts, your insights, and we're at the back end of it now. So, ra so Ricky, why don't you wrap it up in a nutshell, your thoughts and feelings, because you were, you were approached on what your thoughts were before it started. So yeah. now that we've finished the first season, where are you at? Where's your mind at? Well, I, I think that it's going to continue to grow. I certainly didn't. I was hoping it would, it would have the outcome that it did, but I just didn't know. There were so many unknowns, and I could see it slowly building. I'll go back to when we were at East Rutherford. We were talking during that rain delay. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're starting to see how big this could possibly be. People, We started talking about SMX points and what the playoffs are looking like. Then we go to Pro Motocross Championship, and then you see Ken Roxon coming back. Yeah. Then you see uh, Cooper Webb racing for points to make sure they're seated in that top 20. Well, then we get to Charlotte and what I thought would have been my strategy if I was working, it really wasn't, it really wasn't the right strategy. So it was a learning curve. But, but in the end, I think that the importance of Feld coming together with MX Sports, creating Super Motocross World Championship is great for the sport, it's great for the riders, and it's great for the fans. Um, I, like I said, I think it's going to continue to be even bigger than what it was this year, if that's possible. James, I can't help but put it into a, to an every day, every week kind of scenario. It's like a party, right? Hey, you going to the party? Oh, I wasn't invited. I want to be at the party, right? Meaning yeah. I want to be in that top 20. I want to be a seated rider or I want to win that spot through the LCQ. I, want, I don't want to miss out. I want to be there for the SMX playoffs and I want to be there at the championship finale. Yeah, I want to be in the party. Yeah, I want to be <laughs> right? at the party. I ain't going to lie, but yeah, I think that's for sure. Um, a lot of guys are going to look at this differently. Even the guys that's raced it, um, I said, now you've kind of been through it. So you'll start planning your off-season training to make sure you peek in the spot. And then you'll, the guys that don't race um, maybe motocross or something or injuries, they'll try to get back a little bit quicker to get up so they are in these uh, that top 20. But, yeah, I go back even farther than that to have an opportunity to do that. It started back with Feld and MX Sports coming together yep. and doing this. And as a, as a um, you know, ex-racer being a part of this, this is something that what we witnessed this year has been what we've been wishing for to happen for years now. And um, we wouldn't even be here at this stage if it weren't for those guys coming together, creating this format, and now we're reaping the benefits, and they will for years to come. Very well said, because it's collaboration for the benefit of competition and for, the, for us to all enjoy. We work in this sport, but we're fans of the sport. And it has been a season to remember. Enjoy the off-season, folks. We've begun the countdown already to A1 and the 2024 Monster Energy Supercross Championship. But take a moment to reflect on what an awesome year this was. What a story it has been in 2023. It's the ultimate test of, of who is the best dirt bike racer in the world. Not supercross, no motocross, it's everything. Like, who's the absolute best? 
There's nothing better than watching Saturday's races, you know what I mean? 22 of the world's best riders on the line. When we show up, we're bringing it strong. There's nothing that can beat us. Yeah, we heard it all before. That cheap talk can't defeat us. Step on my toes, I get in your face. Nobody's ever taken our place. We're here to tell you, we're gonna tell you. You can't knock us down. Tonight we are champions. We are champions. We'll be 